In this video of USMLE High Yield series, let's talk about gout. Gout is a recurrent attack of acute monoarticular arthritis, resulting from intraarticular deposition of monosodium urate crystals. This deposition leads to inflammation of joints and pain. Risk factors of gout include obesity and male gender, binge drinking of alcohol, and postmenopausal status in females. Let's understand the biology of gout. When RNA or DNA are broken down, they form pyrimidines and purines. Purines particularly undergo a series of catabolic reactions to yield hypoxanthine and guanine. This hypoxanthine and guanine lead to formation of uric acid. By any chance, if uric acid starts to accumulate in the body by increased production of decreased excretion, the levels of uric acid in the blood rises. That is known as hyperuricemia. Hyperuricemia leads to deposition of uric acid crystals in joint leading to gout, deposition of crystals in brain leading to psychiatric manifestations like aggression, self-mutilation. Uric acid stones are excreted through kidney as in red-orange crystals and they can also cause tense muscles as in dystonia. Hematological complication includes faulty utilization of vitamin B12 utilization leading to metabolic me megaloblastic anemia. In this video, we are talking about the joint manifestation of hyperuricemia that is gout. Let's understand the pathology of gout. Hyperuricemia leads to deposition of urate crystals in the joint leading to joint inflammation. Clinical features include erythematous, swollen and tender joints. Common joints include our first metatarsophalangeal joint, midfoot joints, ankle joints, knee joints and wrist joints can also be involved. But the hip joint and shoulder joint are rarely involved. Gout in long term can lead to deposition of urate crystals in the soft tissue leading to formation of TOFI. And urate crystals in kidney can give rise to renal stones or urate nephropathy. Let us know how we diagnose a case of gout. Diagnosis involves blood test where we measure the level of uric acid in the blood. A level more than or equal to 7.5 mg per deciliter indicates hyperuricemia. But in gout, there can be cases where uric acid levels are normal. So we go for radiological imaging. On radiology, if we see erosion of cortical bones known as rat bite erosion, that indicates towards gout. Definite diagnosis involves aspiration of joint, uh, affected joint fluid and analyzing negatively birefringent needle-shaped crystals, which are monosodium urate crystals. Once we have diagnosed gout or gouty arthritis, we have to keep in mind that a very similar condition is also present, which is known as pseudogout. Whereas gout occurs due to deposition of uric acid crystals, Pseudogout occurs due to deposition of CPPD crystals. Gout is more common in male gender, binge drinking, etc., where pseudogout occurs in hyperparathyroidism and hemochromatosis. Gout crystals are needle shaped and negatively birefringent, whereas pseudogout CPPD crystals are rhomboid and positively birefringent. In gout, most commonly involved joint is first toe of foot. Whereas in case of pseudogout, knee and wrist are usually affected first. Once we have ruled out the differential diagnosis, let's proceed towards treatment. Now, while treating gout, we have to keep in mind we have to manage an acute attack of gout. And once we have managed that, we have to proceed towards chronic management of gout. Acute attack of gout involves painful, swollen and inflamed joints. We treat them using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs. Colchicine can be used when NSAIDs are contraindicated as in case of urate nephropathy or NSAID allergy. If colchicine is not working then we can go for corticosteroids as in severe cases. Once we have managed acute attack of gout we proceed towards the definite treatment or the chronic management of gout which involves decreasing the level of uric acid in the blood. 
that can be achieved by using drugs such as allopurinol and febuxostat which inhibit the xanthine oxidase enzyme. If you want to learn more about the medicines used in treatment of gout, you can follow the video present on the i button on the right hand upper corner of this video. By now, I believe you have got an overall idea of gout. To get notes and flashcards, you can follow us on our Instagram and Facebook page at Animated Biology with Urban. The link will be in the description box. Also, we need your support to make free high quality content. You can support us using the super thanks icon on the bottom right corner of the video using PayPal, Paytm or UPI. Also, you can support us on our Patreon page. To get in touch, you can use the following links. This video was proudly made in collaboration with the Nerd Medic. You can follow the channel on YouTube. Until then, bye bye. See you in the next one.